clarify or add to now the body of knowledge about these spheres. I, don't, I haven't seen this published anywhere, but we see a lot of this. Uh, <clears throat> here's some more, just to give you some examples. Put this on the record, aluminum. The same. I, I've, I've written it out here. Fioc Galsi. <laughs> Fe is iron. K is potassium. Oxygen, aluminum, silicon. Fioc Galsi. Okay. That's what we see a lot of these. Again, this is the uh, sample four, and this is the Potter Building. Sample four is uh, Tom and Frank just spoke at the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, here's a, oh, I got this again. Just to remind you, boom, spray comes out of that. Molten iron spray cuts through metal, forms spheres, guaranteed. Now, this is new. Um, John Perales, an engineer, uh, purchased thermite commercially. Look, you can buy the thermite on eBay. This is not a secret, okay, but uh, you can also buy large quantities commercially. He did. We looked inside. I was, I was puzzling. Where is this silicon coming from in these spheres? Turns out that commercial thermite in the iron oxide, this is mostly iron oxide, but the dark here is mostly silicon. It's silicon rich. And so you have aluminum chunks. The aluminum is fairly pure, it turns out, in this uh, commercial mix, but the iron oxide has silicon mixed in. And when we look at the spheres, here's what we see. Does this look familiar now? Iron, potassium, silicon, aluminum, and oxygen. Same thing. The same thing, folks. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see. These look very much the same. Let's compare them side by side. Let me just ask you, which one of these do you think is from World Trade Center, which one is from commercial thermite? There are some differences, but you see differences from sphere to sphere, too. The amount of aluminum oxide that gets trapped, for example, in thermite varies. So the aluminum peak will vary uh, just from sphere to sphere. But the same elements, uh, this characteristic that is the signature, FIOC ALCI, is common to both. This is going to be hard for the official theorists, and I believe demands now, not just an investigation, but a criminal investigation. <laughs> and um, I'd like to, I'm so glad there's a flag here. Love the flag, you know? <laughs> and uh, I love my country. But I am concerned about a number of trends in my country. I won't go into those in detail. Let's get back to the science. But I just want you to know that I love my country, and I believe that we still have a constitution, and we still have a chance to turn things around and have a much better society based on 9-11 as, as a pivot, a turning uh, point and, and a basis for change. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Okay, so the top then is uh, raw thermite, the unreacted thermite, and when you react it, you get these spheres. Something has produced very similar spheres as we look at it, this similar chemical signature, very much the same in the spheres as we find in commercial thermite. Now here's the new discovery, uh, the question I want to pose today. Could we find unreacted thermite in the World Trade Center dust? We see the residue. This is the smoking gun already, but can we find the, the gun, I guess you'd say? The unreacted thermite. Da -da. Many red chips I, I found in the World Trade Center dust. About last June, I started noticing these. They're attracted by a magnet. A thought came, well, maybe it's just paint. There, there's all over these little uh, red chips. They're like eggshell chips. You know, you scrunch up an egg, egg shell and you get about that thickness, roughly speaking. These are quite tough, though. They're, they're strong. Uh, and now these are bilayered. This only shows one side, the red side. The other side is a dull gray. Red is the color of iron rust, iron oxide. One of the oxides, Fe2O3. It already suggests something to you. They're attracted by a magnet, suggests iron as well. And now the chemical composition, are you ready, of these chips, the red side. 
I won't talk much about the gray side. It's harder to analyzing, use, analyze using this method. But the red side has, oh, I can just hardly wait to show you. Okay, here it is. These are red chips. Uh, the one is from the Liberty Apartment, McKinley. The other is from the Brooklyn Bridge sample. These also show, can you see it? It's very clear, iron. It's hard for me to point to it from here, but I think you can pick out now. Fe is iron, Si is silicon, Al is aluminum, K, potassium, very clearly, and of course, oxygen. It's the same signature as the spheres. It's the same signature as the commercial thermite. I've put them side by side so that you can look at this. Hopefully, as this is taped, you can you know, pause and make your comparisons. The same signature. Again, the amounts will vary from chip to chip and from sphere to sphere. And, and where you look on a chip, there are some variations. And certainly where you look on a sphere, there are some, uh, well, from sphere to sphere anyway, there are variations. The spheres typically are small. A few, uh, a micron up to about 1,500 microns, 1 1.5 millimeters is the largest uh, sphere that we've seen. So here's a co uh, comparison now from the Brooklyn Bridge sample, uncontaminated within 20 minutes of the collapse of the North Tower. Again, red chip on this side. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. I've got to correct the title, sorry. The red chip is from the uh, McKinley sample. The sphere, which is here, is from the uh, Brooklyn Bridge uh, sample. And so, but again, you see, from sample to sample, we see these, the same pattern. Fioc alci. Okay, now this is from, so I have, to, I have to look at the title, I remember. Red dust, I called it back then. When were those data taken? June, yeah, June, you see, of this year. This is the first time I've discussed these red chips publicly. I think it's important to get this out. We have done some other tests. Oops. I want to mention, so, so one of the tests I did. So I took one of these red chips and I had a friend uh, scan. It's hard to get thermite to ignite. And I thought and thought, how can we tell if this is thermite or not? It's not easy. It has the right chemical signature. Aluminum, iron, oxygen is what you need. And it's got some other goodies thrown in, silicon and uh, potassium. And so typically, I put the K in parentheses. Not all of these show much potassium. But anyway, that's the signature. And so a friend of mine has an oxyacetylene torch with a very fine tip. He uses it for repairing uh, eyeglasses. And so I had him pass it over one of these red chips. It was just one thirty-second of an inch on a side, approximately square. And it, uh, it flamed, it flashed as he passed over it. Now that's not itself a proof, but it's a strong indication, along with the chemical composition and the red color, which in indicates iron oxide, that this is a form of thermite. I've provided red chip samples now to an independent laboratory for testing with the question to them, do they agree, do they find that these red chips are a form of thermite? The technical term is aluminothermic. Independently, Justin Keoff and his team, I know he's working with Richard Gage, is now also looking at the World Trade Center dust spheres and red chips also. Excited to say. <laughs> Richard called up Justin last night, I talked to him on the phone. Oh, yeah, we saw some of that red stuff, you know. He said, we tried it in a Raman spect spectrograph system analysis. And he said, we hit it with a laser, 